How's it going everyone? It is Panjano here and in today's video I'm going to be sharing with you guys one of the most important steps in which you can take to ensure that you are getting the best performance possible from your graphics card. This can also help fix graphics card crashes alongside game crashes you may be experiencing or just issues in general with your graphics driver. By removing all of the old, excess, bloated, outdated GP driver files every single time we update. This is quick, simple and most importantly completely free to do and it's highly recommended for every single person watching this video regardless of how good, bad, new or old your system is. If you do find this video helpful please do consider pressing that like button alongside leaving a comment for the YouTube algorithm as it helps me out tremendously. With all of that and more coming straight after a message from today's video sponsor. Tired of seeing the Activate Windows watermark, built a new PC, or just want to own Windows at a major discount, head over to WhoKeys to purchase a Windows 10, 11, Home or Pro OEM key at a major discount. Make sure to use code PAN20 for a further 20% off at checkout where you can use a safe and secure payment method such as PayPal. Once your key is delivered, simply input the key inside of Windows and boom, you're now completely activated and owned own windows forever. You'll now have access to all features and no more watermark. Thanks again to WhoKeys for sponsoring today's video. For this we're going to be using the DDU or Display Driver Utility Tool. This is a fantastic tool in which we can use to remove all of the old display drivers from our PC, where we can then go ahead and install a brand new display driver. Depending on how old your Windows installation is, your graphics card drivers may be stacked on top of each other for years. We first of all need to find and download the latest GPU driver for our system, as we're going to be installing this later. And this works perfectly well on both Windows 10 and Windows 11. Starting off, navigate down to your task bar, right click, and open up Task Manager. Alternatively, if you're on Windows 11, press Ctrl or Delete on your keyboard, go to Task Manager. With inside of here, go to the Performance tab. Scroll all the way down on the left hand side and you want to find the GPU in which you are using. So you'll obviously see an Nvidia GeForce graphics card or an AMD Radeon graphics card. Once you click on the GPU, go to the top right hand side, you'll then be able to see the make and model. With that information, you need to navigate inside of the description down below and click on the corresponding link for either Nvidia GeForce or AMD Radeon cards. For Nvidia users, you'll be brought to this web page. Simply scroll down to your product type, select your product series. So for me, I'm running a 30 series for notebook. Select the product in which you are using the operating system you're running on, language, then select Start Search. Select and download the latest game ready driver at the top of your page. Select Download, navigate over to Download Now. Once the driver's finished downloading, select Show in Folder, drag this over to your desktop. For AMD Radeon users, you'll be brought to this web page found here. Navigate down to the Graphics tab on the left hand side, then select the graphics series in which you're using, select the model, the exact model, Submit. Once again, select the operating system in which you're currently using, then select the top download which is underneath the operating system. Again, your driver will be downloaded, simply put that on your desktop. With our GPU drivers now downloaded and ready on the desktop, for those of you running on an NVIDIA GeForce based graphics card, there's actually going to be a video I'm recommending now which you can find in the top right hand side of the screen or in the description down below for de-bloating your NVIDIA driver. Now this isn't a step that everyone's going to want to apply. If this does interest you, you can actually modify NVIDIA drivers to remove all of the excess features in which typically most people do not use. This frees up performance, lowers CPU overhead and also lowers latency which will give you better gaming performance. If that doesn't interest you, that's absolutely fine, we can continue on. We now need to go ahead and grab the Display Driver Uninstaller Utility. Once again, navigate inside of the description down below where you'll be brought to the DDU or Display Driver Uninstaller link. Inside of here, simply scroll down all the way towards the bottom, click on the mirror which is closest to you. Once the program is then downloaded, select Open. Go back to your desktop, drag the EXE onto the desktop. Double click on the EXE, then simply press Extract. You can go inside of the folder. You should then be able to find the Display Driver Uninstaller.exe ready and available to use with inside of here. But before we run the Display Driver Uninstaller.exe, we actually need to boot Windows into safe mode for this to be done correctly. The reason we're going to be using safe mode is that this will stop the advanced display driver running on our system, which will then allow us to remove it. You won't be able to remove all of your display drivers if you're running Windows normally, as your display driver is currently being used, so it obviously cannot be deleted. You'll still have a display output when you delete your driver, this will just make your resolution really low until we install our new one. But before we do this, on Windows 10 and 11 it's recommended to actually disconnect from your internet whilst we do this. When we boot Windows without our display driver installed, Windows is automatically going to be using Microsoft servers to download a recommended driver. This will automatically start installing in the background before you can install your driver, meaning that all of this work is going to be for nothing as this is simply going to be installing an outdated driver. So take yourself to the bottom right hand side, right click on your internet, go to network and internet settings. Navigate down to advanced network settings, then go down to more network adapter options. Inside of here simply disable all of your network adapters temporarily until we're done with the next step. For those of you running on Windows 10 to turn off your network settings, navigate down to the bottom right hand side, right click on your internet, select open network and internet settings. Inside of here navigate down to your change adapter options, right click on all of your adapters, 
then select disable. To re-enable them, you'll want to do the reverse of this by right clicking on them and just selecting enable. With them all disabled, we can then go ahead and boot into safe mode. The easiest way to do this with inside of Windows is to simply hold down your shift key on the left hand side of your keyboard. With shift held down, navigate to the bottom left hand side and click on your Windows button. Go over to your power button, right click, then select restart. At this point, you still want to be holding down the shift key. Continue to hold down the shift key until you're met with this page. Once you're here, you can then let go. At this point, you want to navigate down to troubleshoot, then go to advanced options, then down to startup settings. Go to the bottom right hand side, then select restart. You'll then be brought to this page. Inside of here, we want to select option number four. To do this, go over to your keyboard and press number four. Your PC will then be booted into safe mode. You may notice at this point that your resolution looks completely out of whack. That's completely normal as we're not currently running a display driver. Just simply log in as usual. Go to your desktop and navigate over to the DDU folder in which we installed earlier on. Right click on the display driver uninstaller and run this as admin. Select OK to any pop-ups which show up, then select close on this page. Inside of here, you then need to navigate to the right hand side and select your device type. We're going to be uninstalling our GPU drivers, so select GPU, then go to the drop-down menu underneath this and select the make of GPU you have installed to your system in which we're going to be removing. For AMD Radeon users, select AMD. For NVIDIA users, select NVIDIA. Once you've selected the graphics card drivers you're going to be uninstalling on your system, we then have three options in the top left-hand side. We have clean and restart, clean and do not restart, and clean and shut down. I would never recommend using the middle option, you won't get the best results from using this. The bottom option is definitely something I would use if you are ever going to be installing a new GPU. So let's say that you've just got yourself a brand new GPU, you want to install it to your system. Before you do that, I would definitely recommend booting up DDU, uninstalling your old display drivers using the clean and shut down method. Once the PC's then shut down, install your new GPU, boot it up, then install your new driver. But for most of you watching this video, you're more than likely going to be just installing a new driver on your current existing GPU in your system. And for this, we're going to be using the clean and restart option, which 99% of you watching are going to go with. So select clean and restart. This will then start the procedure to uninstall those display drivers. Once it's finished, it's automatically going to restart your system. This will then boot you into a normal instance of Windows, no longer in safe mode. Your graphics and resolution won't still look as good as it once did, as we still haven't yet installed our new driver. So once again, log in as usual. So whether you're running on an AMD Radeon card or an Nvidia card, click on the driver in which you downloaded earlier ROM. Once you've selected your driver, select yes to any pop-ups which show up. For AMD Radeon users, navigate down to the install button. This will then go and unpack your driver. Before we go ahead and install this, navigate to the additional options and you'll then have a few options under install type. This is going to come down to what level of settings you want available to you. For AMD, this isn't as important, but if you're not interested in using any of the Radeon settings, you can just install the base driver so you can jump into your games without worrying about any of the settings. You can go with a minimal install where it won't keep any of the recording features and just the base level driver features, or you can go with a full install. Once you've selected your version, go to the bottom right hand side, then select install. During this process, your screen may flicker a few times, turn on and off, and your resolution is more than likely going to change. For those of you installing an NVIDIA driver, double click on your driver, select OK. Once your driver is loaded, you'll be brought to this screen. In my personal experience, if you don't use the NVIDIA GeForce experience, I actually would not install this. Unless you find yourself needing it in the future, you can always download that separately, as installing the NVIDIA GeForce experience will slightly take away from performance as it is extra software running on your graphics driver in the background, then go ahead and select agree and continue. We're then going to be selecting the express installation and the graphics driver will then begin to install. During this process, your screen is going to flicker and turn off a few times and once the graphics driver is then finished installing your resolution should be back to normal. Restart your system if it is required and we've now successfully installed our Nvidia driver. With our brand new driver now installed we now need to re-enable our internet as Microsoft will no longer try and install a driver for us automatically. So once again go down to your internet options, right click and select network and internet settings. Go back to the advanced network settings, navigate down to more network adapter options and re-enable your network adapters by right clicking and selecting enable. You should then be able to reconnect to the internet in a few seconds. And again, for those of you running on Windows 10, navigate down to your internet options, right click, open network and internet settings, change adapter options, right click and enable. Now with our brand new fresh drivers installed, but one last option in which every single person watching this video should definitely look into is to finally make sure that we're running on the correct resolution and more importantly, the correct refresh rate for our monitor. As we've now installed our brand new drivers, these could have been reset. For this, right click on your desktop and select display settings. Proceed to scroll down. This is where you'll have the option for your display resolution. Go to your display resolution, make sure this is set to the maximum. 
navigate down to advanced display settings. In here you'll then see your refresh rate tab in the bottom, go to the refresh rate options and select the highest option available to you on your monitor. This may just be 60 for you, but if you do have more than this, set this to the highest option available to get the most out of the monitor in which you are using. It shocks me how many people don't have their refresh rate set up properly on high-end monitors, as in most cases you do have to set this manually. And there you guys have it. You're now running successfully on a brand new fresh driver with all of the old rubbish removed from your system, helping you fix game crashes, fix performance issues, and also provide you with the best performance possible. If you guys are serious about optimizations and you enjoy videos like this, make sure to stay subscribed to the channel. And again, if you have enjoyed this video, please do press the like button and drop a comment for the YouTube algorithm to help push this video to as many people as possible as it really does help.